now for something completely different. Uh, I'm an MD, have a PhD in neuroscience, I'm dangerously overeducated, I work in a memo-free environment, and I uh, have no adult supervision. Um, you guys are generating so much data that, um, so I looked inside the brain and said, geez, what if we could actually make smart people smarter? So instead of, uh, you know, dots are stupid, lines are two-dimensional, words are ambiguous, what if we could actually use perception, uh, color, representations, uh, transparency? So we developed a nomenclature, a spatial representational tool called ANTS, so we can actually create things... Uh, comprehensible complexification. If there's actually rules of the way that the dots complexify, then we have a chance to actually comprehend these complex scenarios. So we took you know, 80,000 documents on the study of ants, looked at things individually from researchers that are actually published and cited. You can find idiots. Um, we can actually look at the geospatial location of universities that it came from, the global evolution, and look at 80,000 documents at a time. School scores, five years, California test scores, Every location is known, 30 test subject by gender, by ethnicity, and now we can look at five years of the educational crisis that's going on in, in California. Human rights data, we've been trolling the, data, the, the web for different database types. We've looked at human rights data, all the different parameters, and if you zoom in, you can actually see the individual points, complex representations of the different parts of the human rights. Human wrongs, airplane crashes, or pilot error, actually, the airline's called airline incidents. These are all the crashes in the last 10 years listed over there, where they landed, so to speak, and the number of deaths. One attention span, two attention span. Okay, there we go. Angola, Jen Semke loaned us her data set. 20 years of Angola conflict. What we were able to see is actually spatial temporal structures that occur in the data over 20 years of different conflict types. Walking, walk. there we go. Syria, happening in real time. We've been scraping all the data that's coming off the open source uh, media sites, actually looking at children, rebels killed, other folks killed, and we can see what the media is actually saying, when they're saying it, and what they're talking about. Another crisis, Afghanistan. I ended up with a whole bunch of SIGAX data, attacks on coalitions, so different colors or different types of attacks, and we can see what we call sort of Kia, Mia, Missing in action, wounded in action, that's actually 10 months of data. It's a very complex environment. There's also these people doing sentiment analysis, so there's all people doing surveys. We can see it by the country, by the region, by the state, and the individual surveys and information. Red is bad, blue is good, big is more, small is less. Use your nervous system, it's kind of a tool. We can also look at complex things from space, situational awareness, how are villages, again, red is bad, or from aerial photos or from drive-by shootings, as we call it, we're taking camera pictures out the car window, looking at quality of life and then the different parameters that people come and tag. Break, break, new topic, content space. What if we didn't use actually geospatial things, but actually lexicons and as the axes? How many military words, how many social words are in there? We can actually start plotting tens of thousands of documents in space and sort of grokking the spatial relationships and putting the same data in different spaces, different mathematical spaces, gives you insight to see the same data in different ways. And we're walking, we're walking. Are you sure it's 15 seconds? Medical resources. So now we're actually looking at different medical devices. Uh, there's obviously a shortage of them. And what x-rays are being used, imaging devices, and others. So now I can make assessments on where resources actually need to be placed in for different medical devices. We're also looking at disease distribution through different demographics. This is a certain problem that a certain group military has on rhabdomyolysis. And we're now actually looking at times of year. Turns out it has to do with exercise and supplement overuse. And I didn't say that publicly. And we're actually visualizing the flying spaghetti monster. Um, this is actually genetic. Oh, somebody's listening. All right. This, uh, this is actually genetic, genomic data linking different disease types and different characterizations um, that we know in the medical field. And finally, people. So we built something called a Wikitology. We went to Wikipedia. We indexed the terminology. And then we threw a whole bunch of biographies of different meetings and to see how much people claimed about themselves. I'd love to do it this crowd. It'd be very interesting. Uh, what we found is <laughs> quite differences in the audience, and then we played Find the Fed. It was sort of fun. Uh, they, sort of, <laughs> they sort of stand out in real time. Um, they're the ones that didn't share their data. Uh, who knew? Uh, <laughs> yeah, some things are obvious. <laughs> Pay no attention. We also, this is a nepotism detector. We're looking at who, who actually calls which people into, the, uh, into their sort of field over time, how many studies they've been involved in. 
and uh, what kinds of work they've done. Turns out there's nothing interesting from the Midwest, everybody on the East Coast. So even if you have structured data, space is curved, and it is complex, you should use your brain. Thank you very much.